Hello and welcome to today's video. This is Caster. Today I'm going to be dispelling some common myths and misconceptions about DID. There will be a part two to this video as there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to cover. I'll also be making some videos going more in depth into the myths I talk about today and in the next part, so go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. Also, sorry I am filming outside, so you may hear wind and kind of like background noise interference. Sorry about that, it was the only place I had available to film today. But without any farther ado, let's get into these myths. DID is very rare. DID is found in approximately 1-2% to of the population, with the DSM placing its prevalence at 1.5%. That's almost 3.2 million Americans, 0.65 million citizens of the UK, and 71 million people worldwide living with DID. That's more common than young women with bulimia and about the same prevalence as the gene for red hair. So if you were to think about the number of people that you know with red hair, that's the number of people you know with DID. DID was made up by and is overdiagnosed by Americans. Cases of DID are consistently identified around the world. Additionally, some of the leading research in the field has come from countries that are not the United States. With some forward-thinking studies of DID coming from the Netherlands, Turkey, Puerto Rico, and New Zealand, DID can develop at any age. DID only develops in early childhood, no later. DID is caused by prolonged repeated trauma during childhood, usually thought to be before the ages of 6 to 9. Were prolonged trauma to happen later in life, the individual could develop PTSD or CPTSD or any other comorbid conditions, some of which do have overlapping symptoms, but they could not develop DID. DID is only caused by child abuse. DID is caused by severe prolonged trauma during childhood. Although child abuse fits this criteria, and about 90% of individuals with DID have experienced child abuse or neglect, there are other forms of childhood trauma associated with DID that are often overlooked and invalidated. These include repeated medical and surgical procedures, war, natural disasters, terrorism, and human trafficking. Disorganized attachment to the child's primary caregiver also plays a role in the child's likelihood to develop DID. It is also important to remember that things that may be traumatic to one child may not be traumatic to another, and it also needs to be taken into account if the child has any other conditions that may cause them to react to traumatic events differently, such as autism. Just as importantly, we must remember that the ones surviving and going through these events were children. Looking back on them now, we may not find certain things as scary and traumatizing, but it is important to remember that it was the mind of a child that was processing all the things that were happening to them at the time. DID and schizophrenia are the same thing. DID is a dissociative disorder caused by severe trauma, whereas schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder and those with it experience a chronic form of psychosis due to a biochemical genetic disorder of the brain. While both individuals with DID and schizophrenia may hear voices, individuals with DID are hearing the internal projections of the thoughts and voices of their alters. Individuals with schizophrenia do not have alters, and although schizophrenia can be triggered by trauma, trauma is not the root cause, as is the case with DID, and schizophrenia does not involve amnesia and flashbacks. Although some individuals with DID may experience psychosis due to other comorbid conditions, DID itself is not a psychotic disorder and does not have any symptoms related to psychosis, and those with DID are not delusional or hallucinating their alters. DID is a personality disorder where you have multiple personalities. Because of its association with its old name, multiple personality disorder, DID is often mistaken for a personality disorder, but it is in fact a dissociative disorder. Although separate identity states are part of the disorder, these are just a byproduct of severe dissociation and trauma, and not the sole disorder. People with DID also experience a wide range of dissociative symptoms, not only identity alteration and dissociative amnesia, but also depersonalization, derealization, trance states, perceptual disturbances, and somatic symptoms. Additionally, because DID is the result of trauma, it is highly comorbid with PTSD and CPTSD, and those with the disorder also experience related symptoms, as well as a wide variety of other comorbid conditions, such as depression, anxiety, borderline personality disorder, etc. People with DID are possessed. There is a profound amount of research to prove exactly what is going on in the brain and bodies of individuals with DID, and regardless of what faith you subscribe to, it's not possession. Attempts to try to pray away or exercise any aspects of DID would be just as fruitless as trying to do the same to any aspects of any other mental health condition. 
And not only that, but it could also be very traumatic and upsetting to the already suffering survivor. People with DID see their alters in the outside world around them. For most individuals with DID, any seeing of their alters happens internally in an inner world in their head, existing in which usually feels just as real as existing in the outer real world. Voice communication can take place in the mind, a reason DID is commonly misdiagnosed as schizophrenia. Hearing the internal thoughts and voices of alters can seem like hearing voices, especially if you don't already know what that's like, but these are not auditory hallucinations. DID is just aspects of the personality that everyone has. All humans have different aspects of their personality, but DID is not that. DID has very specific diagnostic criteria that must be met to get a diagnosis. That the average person, even one who had undergone trauma and had CPTSD, would not fit into. According to the DSM, the following criteria must be met for an individual to be diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder. The individual experiences two or more distinct identities or personality states, each with its own enduring pattern of perceiving, relating to, and thinking about the environment and self. The disruption in identity involves a changing sense of self, sense of agency, and changes in behavior, consciousness, memory, perception, cognition, and motor function. Frequent gaps are found in the individual's memories of personal history, including people, places, and events for both the distant and recent past. These recurrent gaps are not consistent with ordinary forgetting. The symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. If you have DID, you can't know you have it. While it's common for hosts of a DID system to initially have little to no awareness of their trauma, many individuals with DID are aware of signs of their alters beginning in their childhood. It also isn't uncommon for individuals with undiagnosed DID to at one point be aware that they contained other people, only to begin explaining it away to others and themselves once they grew older and realized it wasn't normal. Additionally, many individuals will experience their symptoms, but not really have the correct words to describe it, or may not understand well enough what is going on to share their experiences. For this reason, those with DID typically spend an average of 6 to 12 years in the mental health system before receiving a diagnosis. And because of this, it isn't uncommon for those with DID to piece together that they are in fact a system and do have DID before receiving a formal diagnosis. DID alters are obvious and extreme and make it easy to tell when someone has DID. Only about 5-6% to 6 of individuals with DID have an overt presentation of their alters and their switches. In fact, for the majority of those with DID, switching between alters can't be detected by a casual observer at all. Dramatic changes in one's behavior often draw attention, and this may have at one point been dangerous for the survivor. And for that reason, many alters learn to blend in, and those who are overtly distinct will often try their best to recreate the host's presentations and behaviors. Those with DID are much more likely to be thought to have mood disorders, psychotic disorders, personality disorders, or PTSD, rather than DID. Alters cannot have mental health issues that the main survivor does not have. It is very common for some alters to deal with depression, bipolar, eating disorders, OCD, self-harm behaviors, etc. that other system members don't struggle with at all. This is very common because due to the amnesic barriers of DID, the experiences that individual members of a system have lived through and remember and shape how they see themselves and how they see the world may all be very different. It's impossible for alters to have different physical abilities, eyesight, health conditions, etc. because they all still share the same body. This is not impossible at all and is actually incredibly common to see in individuals with DID. Research has found that different alters within a system can operate on different neural pathways within the brain. And because the brain and body are so closely connected and the brain is so powerful, this changes what the body will feel, experience, and even tell its organs to do when different alters are out. Alters can have different glasses prescriptions, respond to medication differently, and even produce different levels of various hormones. Different parts of the brain being activated by different alters being out affects the way the body interprets and responds to external cues, feedback, and sensations. This is because many physiological functions are highly responsive to one's mental state and neurological functioning. DID can be treated with medication. There are no medications that can treat DID. That being said, there are medications that can treat the many comorbid conditions that come along with DID, such as CPTSD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, and other conditions that are commonly diagnosed alongside DID. 
Many survivors find relief in the treatment of these conditions with medication that can help them find comfort in their day-to-day -day lives and aid them in effectively managing their DID. Anyone can treat a DID patient. Even a clinician with extensive background in treating trauma survivors may not have the necessary skills to treat someone with DID. A therapist must be aware of the nuances of dissociation, system dynamics, personality differentiation, memory processing, and alter integration, if that's a goal of the individual. A clinician would have to have a specific interest in pursuing these points because unfortunately, DID is a topic that is still only slightly glanced over in most college psychology curriculums. If you seek therapy for DID, you have to integrate. Every system is different. Integration may be a goal for one system, partial integration for another, and another system may have no intentions of integrating whatsoever. There are many successful therapies for DID that do not involve integration, and instead help the system learn to work through traumas, work on communicating better, work on skill building, and work together better for daily living. Integration is never a must, and anyone insisting it is against your wishes is not listening to your needs. Well, that does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If there are any crazy myths and misconceptions that you've heard, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss when I post part two of this series. In the description, you'll be able to find links to our Instagram and website where you'll be able to find helpful resources about DID. I've also left in the description some of the awesome resources that we used for creating this video. Some great articles, some great blogs, and some great websites that you should definitely check out for further learning. If you want to leave a like on this video and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. But thanks so much for watching, have a good one, and we'll see you next time.